Hello, I'm Frank Skinner and welcome to Room 101. The show where three guests battle to get the things they hate entombed for all eternity in the dreaded vault. Joining me tonight are comedian Hugh Dennis, presenter Mel Gedroich and legend Scylla Black. Wow. <laughs> OK, let's have the first category, please. <laughs> people. OK, so what kind of people wind up Scylla? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. It's people who say, do you know who I am? I ate that. I ate reality stars that walk the red carpet and expect to be there and, you know, expect the treatment, the star treatment. And they're famous for five minutes. Mm. I ate that. I absolutely <laughs> ate that. Wow. I, did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I was standing, I was standing in line um, at an airport and a very famous lady, I won't... Uh, I won't name her. Please, oh, go on. No, no, please. No, no. Just I know that I wouldn't clue. dream of naming her. Bigger than you, Scylla. Bigger was... than you. No. <laughs> <laughs> please so, tell us, Scylla. She was trying to get an upgrade from business class to first class. And I'm standing patiently behind her. And the last thing that she mentioned was, but I need an upgrade. <gasps> Don't you know who I am? And I won't mention any names. Is, no, it, okay. Valerie doing... Singl is it Valerie Singleton, Scylla? Yeah. <laughs> Scylla, please. No, she's very posh. Posh. Camilla. <laughs> Look, stop. Don't no. be a Scylla griller. Sorry. <laughs> Leave her alone. You wouldn't be surprised if I mentioned the name. So why don't you see how surprised we'd be? <laughs> <gasps> I'm, I'm well, look, thinking, though, I was thinking this, though, it's an incredibly dangerous strategy. You know, there was, well, there was one occasion when somebody uh, stopped me in, a, in, in the street and went, I know you. And in those instances, to kind of put them out of their slight embarrassment, I, I kind of get, yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an actor. Um, I mean, I'm in a thing called Outnumbered. I did a thing called Mock the Week. And he went, nope. <laughs> 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 no, he went, nope. Yesterday, home base Chichester. <laughs> well, I would, I would never say, uh, do you know who I am? I have, when I've been queuing up to get into places, I have used this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Um, and Frankie Howard, the late and great Frankie Howard, was right. Um, common as muck. And if, with a few bob, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't... Yeah, but even in, in restaurants, when I call up restaurants, if they don't want me as Mrs Willis, uh, they don't get my... I don't ever go there again. So you don't say I'm still a black? No. Oh, God, no. Really? No, I don't. Wow. I love that. Was it Carol Middleton? <laughs> <laughs> I once heard Pete Doherty say, do you know who I am? But it was a genuine inquiry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think you're right. People who say, um, don't you know who I am? Or yeah. do, you, do you know who I am? Yeah. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're bad people. This is a clip um, I'd like yes. to show you, which um, as an example of someone saying, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> do you know who I am? Yeah, you are still up right? Do you know who I am? Lulu. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. yeah. <laughs> oh, my hands have been shaved. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what is you's people pet hate? <laughs> this is... This is people who bring round cards <laughs> for you to sign. Before I do what I do now, I had, I had a proper job for about 
seven or eight years, I suppose, out of university. And the thing I always hated was this. Someone will come up with a card and go, you know Emma, who you've, ne who you've never met? You, you have no idea who she is. She works in the other building. She's just nipped off to the loo. Would you mind signing this? Oh, no, she's coming. Hang on. And then, <laughs> and then eventually you get the card. And at that point you realise that you've never actually been told what the card is for. <laughs> you've got a choice, generally, between is it their birthday or are they leaving the company, right? So you try and cover both bases. That's what I always try to do. So you put things like, have fun, you know, enjoy yourself. <laughs> and then you give the card back and you discover that the reason you're giving them a card in the first place is because they're having one of their kidneys removed. <laughs> I mean, I feel quite sorry for the people whose birthday it is or who's leaving or whatever, because they're sitting there and they have to pretend that they don't know that a card is being signed yeah. all around. Yeah, that's very true. People come in and say, oh, uh, Wendy, can you just come into the yeah. office? And you have to work away like you haven't... I mean, it's, yes. it's a nightmare. Pressure. And, and, all and that having, pretending. But having said all that, if I ever leave anywhere, I would like one, one of these cards. Yeah. <laughs> and you never know, you might need a new kidney. <laughs> I think they probably do I don't, think, I don't think they top them inside the card. <laughs> I think sometimes a card can do more harm than good. This is a card, it's a genuine Valentine's card, available from Asda. <laughs> <laughs> no Genuine. Way. I think the sticker with 7P, 7P? I, that is removable. <laughs> to me and said, could you sign a card for my dad's birthday? And I signed it, sent it back. I thought, that's a lovely thing. I saw it on eBay. <laughs> Three weeks later, oh. and the price they were asking was less than the card cost. <laughs> <laughs> so my signing of it had reduced its worth. <laughs> OK, what people wind up Mel? People who overpronounce words in Italian. <laughs> it's a bit of a niche one, this. No, but I... It's a bit of a niche one. OK. So, I'll give you a sort of example. Let's set the scene. Uh, I've got a friend, sort of friend of my brother's, who... She goes into a restaurant, she's very softly spoken, and she'll get the menu out. We're in an Italian restaurant or whatever, and, and she'll say, um, uh, yeah, that, that looks that looks great. Um, I think I'll start with the funghi alla melanzana. <laughs> um, and then I'll probably go for the stracciatelle alla funghi. And, um, I don't know, I'll probably... For dessert, I'll probably have tiramisu. <laughs> Could you tell us what this person's name is? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I do notice. It is... Yeah. It, they only seem to do it in Italian. Yes. I wouldn't... I mean, who would dare go into a Chinese restaurant and say, yes, I am ready to order? Can I have the chicken chop? You wouldn't dare! <laughs> you would not... <laughs> it would, it would no. be wrong on a, <laughs> on a million levels. For no. some reason, it's OK in an Italian restaurant, even though it's exactly the same thing. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a show-offy thing, it's pretentious, it's unnecessary. There is a name for it. It's called hyperforeignism. Is that yeah, that's so, honestly oh, what it's really? called when you overdo the thing. And I've got a clip of a woman here who I would say is the hyper foreign secretary. <laughs> and she's w Welsh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, she's someone who I think totally falls into the trap you're Good. talking about. Let's have a look. Mix it with half a tub of ricotta, which I love to serve with parpadelle. You can also use dried tagliatelle or even penne. You can also use linguine, spaghetti. One tub of mascarpone, one tub of ricotta. The tagliatelle should be just al dente. That is why you don't have spaghetti with bolognese. <laughs> I, I felt... Oh! Ah. <laughs> oh. oh. The... The bolognese is a bit of a letdown. Bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way it was the way she said spaghetti. Did you know she said it about five times? Yeah. They don't need a spaghetti. And they don't need a spaghetti. Yes. Yeah. There's no need. No, it's spaghetti. We all <laughs> know spaghetti, that. Spaghetti. Yeah. Okay, we come to the end of the people round, and um, I, with the cards thing, I, I think it comes from a good place, and the fact that you uh, want a card when you leave, maybe tonight. I think you've slightly <laughs> un undermined. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll remind you of thing. And I do think, I, I think it's an improvement, even though it is annoying, that people who used to just turn everything into brutish English in, impersonations, they're trying okay. to do yeah. the language okay. a bit. Very. Um, but I do think it is unacceptable. Um, unless you're still a black in 1971, whoever it was, to say, do you know who I am? Oh. Um, and so I am going to put people who say, do you know who I am, into room 101. <laughs> Modern life, right. What doesn't Hugh like about modern life? <clears throat> <clears throat> this, is, um, this is massive charity checks. <laughs> I had to present these things. And it's kind of the impracticality of it. Because the people, <laughs> the people getting the check are going, that's fantastic. And I'm thinking, you're not going to be able to pay that in anywhere. <laughs> No bank is ever going to accept a massive charity check because they haven't got massive paying in slips. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're quite... I mean, they're unwieldy, they're big, they've got sharp corners. That's how Podsy lost an eye, apparently, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Banks don't even like checks, do they? They're trying to get rid of checks, and yet we're still promoting massive checks. <laughs> in China... You know when you win the lottery, you can, you can ask for a no publicity? In China, you can have no publicity, but you still have to turn up and get the cheque. So this is, this is genuine. This is what happens. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it gets worse than that. <laughs> That's a genuine Chinese lottery winner. A million years ago, I was in Liberties, you know, the... Store Hot shop? Yeah. Mm. And, um... I was asked for my autograph by several people, including the shop assistant. And so I signed the cheque, and then she said to me, have you got any form of identification? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I've just signed your autograph book. And I still didn't say, do you know who no, I am? thank God. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Right. What is Mel's modern life gripe? <laughs> Parent and toddler groups. You've got a small child, you're feeling exhausted, you're not getting a lot of sleep. The last thing you want to do is go into an overheated room which has horrible crash mats which smell of foot odour, usually. You get a horrible <laughs> silty beverage, no snacks, nothing to eat at all for an hour and you have to be jolly in an enforced way. Why do you bother trying to make your toddler make friends with other toddlers? We know now they don't make friends till they're at least eight or nine. What's the point of that? I didn't make any friends when I was there. I was just too grumpy and too tired and I have a terrible, terrible memory of this parent-toddler fun club. <laughs> A friend of mine says that his daughter, who's, who's tiny, goes to a group. He said it's not a very interesting group, but it's good for catching all the main diseases. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, we... I, had, I had no idea yeah. parents actually want their child, children to catch stuff early. There was a big thing yeah. um, that pox parties, where, where a mum whose child... I've been to, I've been to those, but not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole other layer in these parent-toddler fun groups, which is basically competition. Oh, so your, your baby hasn't got a tooth yet? Oh, dear. Well, mine got a tooth, you know, two weeks ago or... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, that goes on. That goes on right through. I know. So I did um, my kid's sports day when my son was maybe seven. I took part in my one and only father's race. But I was, I was just sort of dressed normally. There were people in spikes. Yes. And, um... Yes. With shorts <coughs> yeah. and stuff, limbering up. Yeah. And we, uh, we... It was 100 metres, we set off, I got 10 yards, and I was elbowed in the head by the man next to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
just running along, getting deliberately, just going to went... <laughs> <laughs> OK, what doesn't Scylla like about modern life? Uh... Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Modern technology. Where do I start? I mean, I don't like the new technology. Every, the word technology even really makes my blood boil. I mean, what are these things? What, what do you have? Uh, those... Remote, mobiles. Remote control. Oh. Mobiles, yes. I yes. can't stand them. I can't stand them uh, because people walk along the street and I think they're talking to me, but they're talking <laughs> to the phone and I'm answering them. <laughs> you know, what did you have for dinner? Well, I had so and so. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't stand them and, oh, people you have, you at tables. Have you don't have a mobile I phone? I do. I've got um, an iPhone. Oh, an iPhone. An okay. iPhone. Oh, and don't talk to me about the iPhone. I phoned a taxi by mistake and a taxi turned up outside my door and I just wanted to know about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like technology. So you think we should have stopped to etch a sketch? <laughs> What's that? Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, you are someone who in the past has been known to use technology for your, own, for your own ends. Oh, you're not going to show film again, are Th you? This was high-tech. You seem to have lit up an Asda Valentine's card. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a, a wee, um, is that right? Oh, I, c I don't understand wee fees. <laughs> you get these wee fees that do exercises. Yes. You know, you wee, can play wee, golf. Wee, wee. They call oh, them wee. It's wee, OK. Well, you call it whatever you want. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> You can play golf yeah. and you can play tennis. Brilliant. What's wrong with a doorknob? <laughs> it's a good it's a good question. <laughs> no, let me explain. I've got several doorknobs in my kitchen. And I jive with the doorknob. Oh, oh, that's how I that. get my... Oh, try it, Mel. That's great. It's fabulous. Are they... Grab hold of a knob. <laughs> I was rather afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> and then you... It's when... And, and then yeah, you... Steve, right in the afternoon, you're bopping away, jiving away. And you wow. don't need these wee feet. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh. don't you get out? There and do it physically. You can say that about any indoor game. If, if we were playing yeah. Hungry Hippos, you wouldn't say, Get to Africa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> outdoor sports aren't always as much fun as, uh, as people say they are, because this is a German guy who's about to go swimming on a very cold oh, day. Genius. Right. Look at him now, he's Genius. so full of himself. Yes, it's cold, but I don't care. The cold won't stop me from going for a dip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> One thing you're right about, if that had been a, in plain we, it wouldn't have been as funny, would it? <laughs> So I, 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 I don't think I can put parent-toddler groups in because I think it's good that people meet and catch stuff and share their problems. And um, if we put all technology in, it means that um, the show will close down. But I do think those big charity checks... It, the check is dying out as a concept anyway. It's about time they got modernised. So I am going to put big charity checks into Room 101. Thank you. Category 
please. OK, it's the wild card round, which means there is no restraint at all now. It doesn't matter what the subject is, you can pick anything you don't like and try and get it into room 101. So what is Mel's wild card? People who tell you their dreams. <laughs> ah. I don't mean like, oh, oh, I'd love to go into space one day or... Oh, I'd love to win a gold medal at the Olympics or those kind of dreams. I mean, they're, they're nuts and bolts dreams that they've had. It's so dull. <laughs> but do you know, I've done this with friends when someone will tell us a dream and we'll all sit around and try and work out what it means, you know, work out the symbolism. It's quite, it's quite a fun mm, thing to do, no? no? I think it's a bit like... Do you remember catchphrase? Yes, catchphrase. <laughs> it's a bit like that, cos yeah. you get a few so images and they say, yeah, I was in this big house and then, um, and then suddenly a tiger appeared and then I... <laughs> <laughs> Are you afraid of your wife's mother? That's, th uh, that's how I... <laughs> it's good, but it's not right. And then on you go yeah. again. So I, I kind of like the dream oh, analysis stuff. It's no amateur dream analysis. Nah. One thing I'm uh, confused about is, have you ever watched a dog dream? The dogs do that... That's right, yeah. <laughs> They're chasing rabbits. I've been told that before, but my dog How lived you know? in Birmingham its whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a rabbit. Well, you do that. Humans do that, don't they? I get told off all the time for doing that. For doing what? For sort of twitching. Oh. When you dream? Yeah. But what always happens at night... This is hell for me, can I just say? <laughs> this is all hell. So I'll be lying in bed and I kind of... I don't go... <laughs> like that. Yeah. But I do go... And I, I fall off things and then I sort of wake up. Yeah. Do you do that? Oh, stop it, please. I <laughs> this I is have, exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what's Hugh's <clears throat> wild card? <clears throat> <clears throat> I would really like to put Las Vegas in Room 101. I've only been once to Las Vegas, okay. and I went last summer at the end of a... W took the family on this long trip and went to Las Vegas. And I think my expectations of it were sort of slightly wrong, because I thought it would be like Casino or Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> but actually, Las Vegas is sort of, to me, anyway, it is a bit like a sort of a hybrid, a cross between a motorway service station Alton Towers and a cross-channel ferry. <laughs> it's, just, it's just miles and miles of kind of fruit machines and Tat. terrible food. But you have to do a bit of... Uh, you have to do a bit of gambling. You at least have to yeah. go on the fruit machines yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. People spend whole days... You see, often very fat people on fruit yeah. machines with a bucket of kinds yeah. and they on it yeah. all day. And this is the only fruit these people ever see. <laughs> I didn't realise, really, before I went there, that you have to walk through the casinos to get anywhere. But if you have kids, one of the, the rules is that you're not allowed to loiter right, with kids. They can't stop in the casino because it's against Nevada gaming law. So that basically means that you, I spent, like, three days in Las Vegas walking. I, c I could never... <laughs> couldn't stop. The hotel we stayed in had a... We stayed there because it had its own beach. So, knackered after walking for miles and miles and miles, I would go and lie on this pretend beach in the middle of the desert in Nevada, thinking, why aren't I on a beach? <laughs> <laughs> OK, then, what is Scylla's wild card? Mm. Well, knickers, really. <laughs> Doesn't your lingerie and knickers go grey too quickly after you've washed them? I think there's a conspiracy going on. Okay. I think the manufacturers make them so they go grey after a certain amount of time. Do you think that's, it's deliberately made to do that? I think the manufacturers do that. And I've bought from posh shops, Right the way down to, you know... Liberties. Everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I do. I buy and <clears throat> they all the same. 
You're talking about what white knickers. White knickers that go grey after a certain amount of time. Very <laughs> not relatively just quickly. Are they? No. Pardon? <laughs> no, don't I... <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> you should write a you should write a book about this called I Fifty write a Shades book. of Grey. <laughs> I tell you what I love about this is I used to watch you on Top of the Pops in the late 60s and I used to think if ever I met Scylla, I wonder what we'd talk about. <laughs> <laughs> this never crossed my mind, I must say. We have a clip here. Chris Tarrant, as you may remember, used to be a roving reporter before he became a, a big-time presenter. And he's interviewing women in, a, in an underwear factory. And can you imagine in the modern day beginning an interview like this? Excuse me, can I ask you what sort of undies you're wearing? Uh, frilly ones. What like these? No, not like them. Um, little bikini ones. When, you, when you're going out somewhere special, do you put a very expensive pair on? No, not really. Same Just, old ones? Yeah. Do, you, do you wear any of these expensive ones from here? No. Why not? They fall to bits. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Has anyone here ever cut a pair of pants off of themselves? No. OK. Give me the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on now, you've got to tell us. Why I did you do it? I had a bit of an accident. <laughs> oh, okay. You had a bit, of, had an a bit accident. of an accident. And I had to cut, I had to cut. I, I, I didn't want to take the jeans off, so cut the pants out. Has anyone, uh, please tell me someone else has done this. <laughs> what kind of an accident did you have? <laughs> oh, come on, Scylla. Oh, oh, that kind of accident. <laughs> Well, let's call it a surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> right, that comes to the end of that round. And, um... Oh, it's a toughie. I, I think, even though I occasionally do it myself, it can be incredibly tedious to share dreams. But I am slightly fascinated oh. by dreams and what they mean. So I, really? I do also like it if it's in the right context. Las Vegas, I do think, is something that you grow to love. And if you went back without the kids and just embraced it, I think you'd have a great time. But I cannot, I have to say, resist the temptation to put knickers into room 101. brings us to the end of the show. Well done, Scylla. You were the most persuasive guest tonight, so you are this week's winner. <laughs> so, thanks very much, Hugh Dennis, Mel Gedroich and Scylla Black. And thank you. Good night. With his would-be informant murdered, how will Leo uncover the truth? Silent Witness concludes in just a moment here on BBC One. And it changed music forever, 50 years since the Beatles released their first single. BBC Four now celebrates Love Me Do.